I have an interesting question to ask you guys. Is Polo Costa any good? Is he a good fighter? I mean, was he ever good? Because at the start of his career, he was basically the Terminator. I mean, he would absolutely break guys. But then all it took was getting humped by Adesanya twice. And since then, he's been rolling nothing but gutter balls. But what's the reason for that? Is it because his confidence broke after the Adesanya fight? Did he maybe change up his PED stack? Maybe the humping drained him of his masculinity. Or was he just never that good to begin with? Now, for starters, a big reason why people do not take Costa seriously anymore is because he's pulled out of a lot of fights. But that's an issue in and of itself. I want to look purely at his skill set, going all the way back to the beginning. Well, not the beginning, but the first fight that I think matters. And then let's compare that to where he is now and see what exactly happened to him and does he have a shot against Robert Whitaker. Now, the first fight I want to look at was Costa's fight against Johnny Hendricks. Now, for those who don't remember, Johnny Hendricks was a monster back in the day. When he fought GSP, he was just throwing him around. I mean, it was clear he was so much stronger in all the wrestling exchanges. But directly after that fight, USADA came. And then he just completely fell apart, which I personally believe was a complete coincidence. I understand that some people would come to the logical conclusion that, well, he was so good before USADA came, he immediately sucked after, so he was probably taking steroids. But I, I don't believe that's the case, purely for the fact that I don't believe it. I mean, MMA fighters are the most honorable, serious athletes on the planet, and I don't think they would ever partake in anything like that. But anyway... Hendricks, he moves up to 185 pounds, where he had absolutely no business being. He just could not cut the weight after USADA left for some reason. I still don't know why. So he fights Paulo Costa. And here are all the takeaways you need to know from this fight. One, Costa was constantly walking him down, putting Hendricks on the back foot. He was spamming body and head kicks. And, you know, his combinations weren't bad. He'd get Hendricks backed up to the fence... He wasn't just headhunting. He was mixing in a lot of body shots in his combinations, which was causing Hendricks to shell up, which eventually allowed him to land the head kick that ended the fight. And because of the massive size difference, Hendricks' wrestling was completely muted. I mean, he might as well have been shooting into a brick wall. Costa didn't even need to sprawl. Though, what's important to mention is, Hendricks, despite being at every single physical disadvantage, he was landing every single leg kick he threw, Costa didn't even attempt to check, and Costa's boxing defense seemed to be a little spotty. Hendricks was eventually able to start landing without much setup. He would just kind of lunge in or start finding the occasional counter. Costa just didn't seem to have any kind of head movement at all, but at the same time, he was so unbothered by the power that maybe he wasn't trying, or maybe this is some foreshadowing for later. His next fight was against Uriah Hall. Now, Uriah Hall is a very skillful striker. I mean, he's on a completely different planet than Johnny Hendricks, and a real 185-er. But still, seemed a bit smaller than Costa, which I attribute to the fact that the more muscle you have, the more water you can cut, given the fact that muscle is primarily water. But what we saw from this matchup was, Hall was eating Costa alive with the jab. I mean, he could not miss... This fight right here was proof enough that Costa has no boxing defense, none whatsoever. I mean, he was just walking Hall down and getting popped with the jab over and over and over again. Though Uriah's issue was he was letting Costa come into the pocket. And when he'd get there, he would just completely unload, ripping him to the body, going upstairs. Now, Costa wasn't landing with a ton of accuracy, but it didn't seem like he was really trying to. And Hall was really bothered by the power. I mean, it got to the point for me that I was wondering, why is Uriah fighting in the pocket with him? Clearly, he's far more technically skilled. He should be jabbing, moving, and leg kicking. Every time Costa tries to close the distance, he should be circling away. Foreshadowing for later. Luckily for us, Dominic Cruz let us know the reason for this. One of the things Hall said is he didn't want to take a step back because he thought Costa was a bully. But right now, he's having a tough time stepping forward because Costa's just so big. 
I mean, th- that's just really stupid. By doing that, he's just playing into all of Costa's strengths. And, shocker, while trading with Costa in the pocket, he ate a hook, and then a body shot, and then he went down. It was too much for him. Now, Paulo's fight with Yoel Romero, genuinely very impressive. I mean, this was the first time he fought somebody just as big and as strong and as powerful as he is, also with Olympic wrestling accolades. But Costa still walked him down, winging combinations fearlessly. I think the most impressive part about this fight was, it was in the first round, Paulo walked right into a double leg. I mean, Yoel was deep on this shot, but Costa's takedown defense, genuinely very, very impressive. Costa ended up getting the decision, but it was a super, super close fight. It could have gone either way. The thing about this matchup was, though, was that Yoel likes to play mouse a lot in his fights. He likes to lull his opponents into relaxing so he can land a big counter. Which, as we learned from before, is where Costa does his best work. But I I can't fault Yoel for that because, I mean, the fight was razor close. Then we move on to the Israel Adesanya fight. And look, I hate Adesanya. I think about his poor dog every single day. I can't get that out of my head. I get... I gag every time I think of him regurgitating his food into his dog's mouth. I don't I don't want to think about it. I don't want to think about it. But I know a lot of people get on Adesanya about his fight style of leg kicks, jabs, and staying away. But when he fought Paulo Costa, that's exactly what he needed to do. And that's exactly what Uriah Hall should have done. Because what we learned from that fight and the one with Hendricks was Costa just has horrible defense all around. Won't check leg kicks, terrible head movement, but he's big, he's got a lot of power, and he will light you up if you let him get close. So every time Costa tried to get close, Adesanya would always circle away. And this just completely shut Paulo down. He got picked apart, Adesanya completely killed his leg, and then finished him. But losing to Adesanya in this fashion was a huge wake-up call to Costa. He realized, man... I've been relying on power and strength for far too long. I need to work and develop my skills and my defense. Or at least that's what he should have thought because he didn't do that. His next fight with Marvin Vittori is slightly difficult to judge because for one, Costa missed weight by a lot. He just looked huge and puffy in that fight. He gassed very quickly. Physically, he wasn't at his best, but skill-wise, he made very little improvements. Vittori himself isn't known as a really high-level striker by any means, but he was kind of piecing Paulo up. I mean, he had some no-setup lunging right hands that would even make Aljamain Sterling proud. Luckily for Paulo, though, Vittori didn't quite have that one-punch knockout power, but, I mean, he was still countering. But it's not like Costa didn't have any success. He's got really good kicks and landed a head kick pretty flush that he had been setting up with body kicks from the start of the fight. But Vittori is a literal refrigerator. So he just ate it. But, I mean, it was clear he was the more skillful striker out of the two of them. And he won the unanimous decision. And then this brings us to the infamous Luke Rockhold fight. This fight was at Elevation. A ton of fighters gassed really hard on this card. Leon Edwards, probably the most famous example. And Rockhold, no exception. I mean, at the end of the first round, he was done. He was completely done. He had absolutely nothing left. Was gasping for air on the verge of a heart attack. And Costa not only couldn't put him away, but he was getting tagged. Now, I want to be fair. I'm sure the altitude wasn't helping Costa either. I mean, he looked tired as well. Luke just looked way more tired. And there's no special reason for all this in this matchup. I mean, it's pretty simple. Costa is not a very technical striker at all. And he does well when guys shell up when he's unloading. But that's not what Luke was doing. Luke was just ducking his head and winging counters. And Costa was right there to get hit every time. The one thing I will say... We haven't seen Costa grapple that much in the UFC. In the Vittori fight, a little bit, but not much. But in the first round, like very, very early in this fight, he took Luke down and just dominated him from on top. 
all the guys at AKA would go on and on and on about how Rockhold has like legit ADCC level jujitsu. Well, either that's just a complete lie or Costa is really good. So finally, does Costa have a shot against Robert Whitaker? Honestly, after everything I just broke down, I don't even think we need to have this discussion. I mean, it's, it's pretty clear. If Paulo shows up to this fight with the same skill set he's shown up to in every other fight, then he's going to be severely outskilled. We've seen some glimpses that his grappling might be pretty good, but until he decides to use it to really win a fight, it's null and void. His only hope is landing the perfect punch right on the chin, which of course can happen. Or maybe there's a slight possibility that during all of these pullouts, Coast has just been tightening up his game piece by piece, and maybe he'll be a completely different fighter. But I doubt it. Whitaker by decision.